Good morning, everyone. Welcome to Grace Episcopal Church. I'm Reverend Charles Ulick, rector and pastor here. Today we are celebrating at the trick-or-treaters, the ghosty and ghoulies and all those wonderful costumes of our young people uh, today at our service. Please join me in our opening hymn, number 391 in your blue hymnal, in your pew there, page 391, before the Lord's eternal throne. Please stand and let us sing. Again, it's great to have you with us this morning. We continue our celebration on page 355 in your red book of common prayer, page 355. Blessed be God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Forever. Amen. Almighty God, to you all hearts are open, all desires known, and from you no secrets are hid. Cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name through Christ our Lord. Amen.
The Lord be with you. Let us pray. If you are able, please kneel with me or remain standing. Our colic prayer can be found on page one of your top of your bulletin. Almighty and merciful God, it is only by your gift that your faithful people offer you true and laudable service. Grant that we may run without stumbling to obtain your heavenly promises. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Please be seated as we hear God's sacred word. A reading from the book of Habakkuk. The oracle that the prophet Habakkuk saw, O Lord, how long shall I cry for help and will you not listen? Or cry to you, violence, and you will not save? Why do you make me see wrongdoing and look at trouble? Destruction and violence are before me. Strife and contention arise. For the law becomes slack and justice never prevails. The wicked surroundings, the righteous, therefore judgment comes from forth perverted. I will stand at my watch post and station myself at the rampant. I will keep watch to see what he will say to me and what he will answer concerning with my complaint. And the Lord answered me and said, Write the vision, make it plain on, on tablets, so that a runner may read it. For there is still a vision for the appointed time. It speaks of the end and does not lie. If it seems to tarry, wait for it. It will surely come. It, d it will not delay. Look at the proud. Their spirit is not right in them but the righteousness live by their faith. faith. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. We will read the psalm responsibly by half verse. You are righteous, O Lord. Now forever you have judged us. You have issued your decrees. With justice and perfect nature. My indignation has consumed me. Your word has been tested to the uttermost. I am small and of little account. But I do not forget your commandments. Your justice is an everlasting justice. Your law is true. Trouble and distress have come upon me. All of your commandments are my delight. Your righteousness of your decrees is everlasting. reading from Paul's second letter to the Thessalonians. Paul, Silvanus, and Timothy to the church of the Thessalonians and God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ. Grace to you and peace from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ. We must always give thanks to God for you, brothers and sisters, as is right, because your faith is growing abundantly and the love of every one of you for one another is increasing. Therefore, ourselves boast of you among the churches of God for your steadfastness and faith during all your persecutions and the afflictions that you are enduring. To this end, we always pray for you, asking that our God will make you worthy of his call and will fulfill by his power every good resolve and work of faith, so that the name of our Lord Jesus may be glorified in you, in you and him, according to the grace of our God, in the Lord Jesus Christ. The word of the Lord. Please stand with me and let us sing our sequence hymn, our gospel sequence hymn, King of Glory, King of Peace. We'll sing verses uh, uh, no, found in your hymn, blue hymnal 382, 382, verses 1 and 2, and then after verse 3.
The Holy Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to Luke. Glory to you, Lord Christ. This is from chapter 19, verses 1 through 10. Jesus entered Jericho and was passing through it. A man was there named Zacchaeus. He was a chief tax collector and was rich. He was trying to see who Jesus was, but on account of the crowd, he could not because he was short in stature. So he ran ahead and climbed a sycamore tree to see him because he was going to pass that way. When Jesus came to that place, came to the place, he looked up and said to him, Zacchaeus, hurry and come down. I must stay at your house today. So he hurried down and was happy to welcome him. All who saw it began to grumble and said, He has gone to be the guest of one who is a sinner. Zacchaeus stood there and said to the Lord, Look, half of my possessions, Lord, I will give to the poor, and if I have defrauded anyone of anything, I will pay back four times as much. Then Jesus said to him, Today salvation has come to this house, because he too is a son of Abraham. For the Son of Man came to seek out and to save the lost. The Gospel of the Lord. May what I'm about to say be in the name of the Father, and the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Please be seated. So our story today is about a little guy named Zacchaeus. The Lucan writer gives us so much detail of this story today that we it is hard to sometimes miss all the things that are going on within it. Jesus gives us the detail of the trees, a sycamore tree. He gives us the de- detail of how, what this man, Zacchaeus, was all about, who he was in the, in the community of Jericho, probably not well-liked. He probably started low in his abilities as a profession and then grew into a chief tax collector. In all these things, we are given the detail of how God is here with us and how he notices us. How do you notice this little guy up in a tree, a sycamore, a very strong tree, a tree that if you'd cut it down and build a house, it'd be there for a long time or to build a table, and to hold a small gentleman. We hear of God wanting us to know that he is there with us in even our fallible things, our fallible moments, our fallible times when we feel less than we are. 
Today we are celebrating the uh, blessing of the trick-or-treaters, as on this coming week we'll be celebrating uh, all saints and all souls. Very special times in our church uh, festival of saints and those people who we remember. For some, people feel that wearing costumes and going out and trick-or-treating is sometimes not a, really a part of who we are as Christians. But see, to have fun and to celebrate one another is about celebrating life itself. A few weeks ago, Father Kempton was filling in for me while I was at All Saints with our, all, our, our congregate, some of our congregation. And he mentioned how we should celebrate and be joyful in giving and celebrating gift of life. You know, and I can't think of a better way to celebrate than sometimes wearing a mask. Anybody like Captain America? You know, putting on masks reminds us of also of how we can be an alternative personality. Now, some of the masks we've been wearing have been these masks, and they haven't been as much of a celebration because they've kept us away from one another. Probably, I think it still has given us an inability of recognizing who we are, but also it's kept us away from being together. Even though they're keeping us safe, they can also pull us apart. They can also help us to not spread something that can be very damaging to another person. And, you know, masks are funny. We sometimes can wear them and we can sometimes figure out who we are or the person behind it. But sometimes it's difficult to sometimes see who that person is. My favorite mask is my Chewbacca mask that I got from McDonald's a few years ago. I love these. You know, we celebrate and we put these costumes on to celebrate how to have fun and to celebrate one another. Our personalities are sometimes kept behind the mask, though. And God wants us to know that God wants us to come away and put our masks down and allow God to see who we really truly are, the loving and blessed children of God that we are called to be. God loves us in no matter in how we sin and how our fables. Zacchaeus was just that kind of a sinner. His community probably knew him best because Jesus didn't live there. They knew how hard Zacchaeus made their lives by taking much of their property, their livestock, sometimes even their trinkets. They, they, he was not a good person. But Jesus saw through his mask and he Zacchaeus also recognized who Jesus was. And they saw each other of who they really were. I thought it was really bold in the story from Luke today how Jesus just kind of said, I'm inviting myself over to your house. <laughs> Does that happen to anybody here? I don't know if that ever happens to you. When you have people over for company or for coffee, I don't know if that happens anymore. Maybe we should do more of it to get to know one another and also to come back together. So many of us have been separated that we feel like we're less and are not a part of. And that's why I think coming to church is a great communal experience. Yes, we will always have viruses, but they can't keep us away from God's grace. God's grace takes away the masks. And we see each other in the wonderful as we are. He says at the very end of this gospel, today salvation has come to this house. Because Zacchaeus, you too, are a, a, a son of Abraham. Translation, you are a child of God. 
Let us pray. Gracious God, grant that we may see and be seen by our Savior, our brother Jesus. Grant that we may respond with joy to the good news, that we may be generous not only with our wallets, but with our hearts. Grant us freedom in making assumptions about others. Grant that we may see our neighbors as Christ sees them and open our hearts to the faith of generosity to those we may not trust or be like. Grant us understanding that we may live with you. Amen. Please stand with me and let us together respond with our faithful words, the Nicene Creed found on page 358 in your Book of Common Prayer, page 358. We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. If you are able, please kneel as we offer our prayers as people of God. Your prayers of the people can be found on page four of your worship aid, page four. O oh Lord, come before you asking you that, that you listen to us and cleanse us from our sins. Let us pray to God, saying, O oh God, make us worthy of, our, of your call, and that the name of Jesus may be glorified in us. Lord, be merciful to your church. Forgive us our pride in the times we obscure your mercy. Give us humility that we may generously give to you as you have given to us. We pray for all trick-or-treaters gathered here and for our children as they visit neighborhoods and houses. We give thanks for all those celebrating their birthdays, especially Ford Black, Peggy Paxton, and for those celebrating their wedding anniversaries, Liz and George Shaw, and Kristen Stone and Andrew Mathias. We also, we also give thanks for the matrimony of Kirby Black and Mark Freeby, who were married here yesterday. O oh God, make us worthy of your call. Lord, be merciful to our nation. Forgive us our pride and the times we have glorified in our own accomplishments. Give us humility that we may generously care for the orphans, the widows, and all those in need. O oh God, make us worthy of your call. Lord, be merciful to, the, to us, those called to your care for your creation. Forgive us our pride and the times we have polluted the springs and pools of water with which you have blessed us. 
Give us humility that we may generously deal with all your creation. O oh God, make us worthy of your call. Lord, be merciful to the residents of our community. Forgive us our pride in the times we fail to trust that you stand by us and give us the strength we need. Give us humility that we may generously address the challenges that face us. O oh God, make us worthy of your call. Lord, be merciful to those with broken hearts, bodies, and souls. Forgive us our pride in the times we exalted ourselves above your suffering servant. We pray for the end of the drought and continue our prayers for the hurricane victims of Florida, Cuba, and Puerto Rico. The flood victims in eastern Kentucky, those affected by last December's tornadoes, those in our parish and marriage parish and military prayer list. For the people of Ukraine, the end of the war. For those prayers written in our book of prayerful intentions, for all those suffering from the COVID and RSV virus, we pray for the end of gun violence. Give us humility and empathy that we may generously love all your people. O oh God, make us worthy of your call. Lord, be merciful to those who all those who have died, especially those souls we continue to lose with the COVID-19 virus and those in the war in Ukraine each day. Accept them into your glorious company of the communion of saints. Make for them a home in your dwelling forever. O oh God, make us worthy of your call. Look upon us who come before you humble and repentant like the tax collector and grant that we may love with open hearts. Hear our prayers and those in our hearts and minds. We ask this in the name of Jesus, our Savior. Amen. Turning back once again to our Book of Common Prayer, turn to page 360 and let us offer and ask God for forgiveness. Let us confess our sins against God and our neighbor. Page 360. Most merciful God, we confess that we have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed. By what we have done and by what we have left undone, we have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We are truly sorry and we humbly repent. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us and forgive us, that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways, to the glory of your name. Amen. Almighty God, have mercy on you, forgive you all of your sins, through our Lord Jesus Christ. Strengthen you in all goodness, and by the power of the Holy Spirit, keep you in eternal life. Amen. Please stand. The peace of the Lord be always with you. Let us extend to each other a sign of Christ's peace. God's peace. God's peace, choir. God's peace, God's peace, God's peace. If we could have all the trick-or-treaters come forward, we've got a, a special blessing this morning for you all, and a, a prayer for us to also pray together. Yep, come on up. I'd like you to meet my assistant. She's just flown in. She's been on a delay flight in several airports, and... 36 hours delayed. <laughs> this is Hannah Shelley, our youth and children's minister. You may be seated. If you'd like to take pictures, you're welcome to come forward. Guys, if you'd sit down. I have a special...
prayer for you guys today. Hannah and I, and we have some goodies too as well. This is a prayer that we would like to pray in all of our uh, grandchildren or wherever they may be, and for all children who are going trick-or-treating tomorrow. From ghoulies and ghosties and long-legged beasties and things that go bump in the night, good Lord, deliver us and be with us. Almighty God, creator of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen, we give you thanks for all that you have made us, especially for those things which have made the sport of it, to delight and thrill us and for the gifts and imaginations and fantasy. Bless these children and all your people who honor the communion of all the saints on all hallows eve and the custom of trick-or-treating. May the joy of your children May dispel any anxiety or worry. May their laughter turn to darkness into light, and their enjoyment of life inspire us all to rejoice in your goodness. Send your holy angels to protect them and all of our loved ones. May the spirit of generosity be with all those who welcome them, and by your grace and in your love, keep us ever united to you, and one another in the family of the blessed saints. To you we give glory, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. Come on up. While they're getting their treats, I have a few announcements for you as the, as the congregation today. As you probably have noticed, I have been, haven't been hiding behind a bush of flowers in my, my prayer uh, kneeler here. Yesterday, we had a beautiful wedding for Kirby Black, Chris and Nancy Black's daughter, who was married to Mark Preby. And so they have left us the beautiful altar flowers from yesterday's celebration and to adorn our, our church and so we give thanks for Nancy and Chris uh, Black today and for these flowers. We also celebrate uh, Kirby and Mr. and Mrs. Mark and Kirby Bla uh, Kirby. There are direct directories are needing to be updated. And so if you could go to Fletcher Hall right after our church, we are also having hospitality in there as well. We'd like you to check your name and address. If you've a changed your email or your phone number, uh, cell number, or if you don't have a home phone number anymore, we'd like you to please correct those things in our directory. And if uh, you can't find your name in the directory, we'd love to have you uh, give us your contact information so we can uh, get you uh, mailings, et cetera. I'd like to thank our vergers this morning, all the hard work the men uh, did uh, to make breakfast this morning. They did a magnificent job, and I just I'd like to thank them uh, once again. And Linda Sloan, uh, uh, beautiful d uh, table decorations in the parish hall as well. She did a mar marvelous job. As if you saw their little her homemade spiders uh, on top of a black uh, top hat back there. Uh, Hannah, did you want to say something about the yard cleanup fundraiser? Are you weary enough? I don't. <laughs> oh. Okay, and that's from one to three next Sunday. Yes, or, or it's, it'll probably be next week. Or okay, week. great. Or until it's <laughs> great, thank you. Uh, this Wednesday, right after our potluck uh, on Wednesday evening uh, at six o'clock, we're going to be out in the Memorial Garden to celebrate the commemoration of All Souls. 
uh, all of our dearly departed loved ones in our, our memorial garden and also celebrating and lifting up those of your loved ones if you'd like to join us as well uh, to remember them by name uh, tomorrow uh, or Wednesday evening at 6 p.m. I hope you can join us. And then next Sunday, we'll be celebrating the Festival of All Saints uh, uh, and all, the, all souls as well at this, at both services uh, next Sunday. <clears throat> also, in your bulletin, you'll notice you, there's a QR code next to the offering uh, point of our service. You're w uh, able now to electronically uh, click on that uh, QR code and go directly to our giving app. So if you don't have uh, the resources that you would like to give to, maybe you'd like to help support the youth group, uh, it's right there uh, with a click of a button on your phone as well. So that's uh, in new in our bulletin as a way to help support our church. Also, uh, next month we are going to be celebrating Veterans Day. And so if you're a veteran, uh, we'd love to uh, give a, a prayer for you and celebrate your service to our country. Uh, if you haven't done so, contact the parish office uh, with your name and the branch of service that you uh, uh, served our country with. And if you're a law enforcement officer uh, or first responder, please contact us well, as well and we will also add you to our name of list as well to those who are serving our local communities. Walk in love as Christ loved us and gave himself up as a sacrifice unto God.
we continue our celebration on page 361 in your Book of Common Prayer, page 361. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the, lo to the Lord our God. It is right and a good and joyful thing always and everywhere to give thanks to you, Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. For by water and the Holy Spirit, you have given us a new people in Jesus Christ, our Lord, to show forth your glory in all the world. Therefore, we praise you, joining our voices with angels and archangels and with all the company of heaven who forever sing this hymn to proclaim the glory of your name. Holy and gracious Father, in your infinite love you made us for yourself, and when we had fallen into sin and become subject to evil and death, you in your mercy sent Jesus Christ, your only and eternal Son, to share our human nature, to live and die as one of us, to reconcile us to you, the God and Father of all. He stretched out his arms upon the cross and offered himself in obedience to your will, a perfect sacrifice for the whole world. On the night he was handed over to suffering and death, our Lord Jesus Christ took bread, and when he had given thanks to you, he broke it, gave it to his disciples, and said, Take, eat, this is my body which is given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. After supper, he took the cup of wine, and when he had given thanks, he gave it to them and said, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Whenever you drink it, do this for the remembrance of me. Therefore, we proclaim the mystery of faith. Christ has died. Christ is risen. Christ will come again. We celebrate the memorial of our redemption, O Father, in the sacrifice of praise and thanksgiving, recalling his death, resurrection, and ascension, we offer you these gifts. Sanctify them by your Holy Spirit. To be for your people the body and blood of your Son, the holy food and drink, the new and ending life in him. Sanctify us also that we may faithfully receive this holy sacrament and serve you in unity, constancy, and peace. And at that last day, bring us with all your saints into the joy of your eternal kingdom. All this we ask through your Son, Jesus Christ. By him and with him and in him, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all honor and glory is yours, almighty Father, forever and ever. Amen. And now as our Savior Christ has taught us, we are bold to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever and ever. Amen.
Passover is sacrifice for us. Therefore, let us keep the feast. Ah, alleluia, alleluia, alleluia. The gifts of God for you the people of God. Take them in remembrance that Christ died for you and feed on him in your hearts by faith with thanksgiving. Wherever you are in your faith journey, all baptized Christians are welcome at this communion rail and at this altar. We are continuing to use intinction uh, and the common cup at this time. If you'd like to receive from either one, please indicate that to the Eucharistic minister or myself, we also have a gluten-free wafer that's also been blessed as well. If you'd like to receive that instead of the common wafer for yourself, please indicate that to me as you come forward. All are welcome.
let us offer our prayer after Holy Communion on page 366, page 366. Let us pray. Almighty and ever-living God, we thank you for feeding us with the spiritual food in the most precious body and blood of your Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ, and for assuring us in these holy mysteries that we are living members of the body of your Son and heirs of your eternal kingdom. And now, Father, send us out to do the work you have given us to do, to love and to serve you as faithful witnesses of Christ our Lord, to him, to you, and to the Holy Spirit, be honor and glory, now and forever. Amen. Again, please join us in, our, in Fletcher Hall for our hospitality uh, this morning. And thank you again for coming to Grace Episcopal Church. If you are new here, it is wonderful to have you here. The peace of God which surpasses all understanding, keep your hearts and minds in the knowledge and the love of God and of his Son, Jesus Christ our Lord, and the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and of the Holy Spirit be among you and remain with you always. Amen. Let us go forth and be the church. Alleluia, alleluia.